So this uh, overview was to discuss the types of urinary diversion in women who have had a pelvic exenteration type procedure where the bladder, the urinary bladder was removed. And over the last 70 years plus now with the introduction of pelvic exenteration in the early 40s uh, with Alexander Brunswick in New York at Memorial Hospital, uh, there's been a shift and an evolution of this type of reconstruction. His initial type of diversion was a wet colostomy where the ureters were placed into the sigmoid colon going out into the stoma mixing urine and stool into one bag. This was the initial operation. It was quick, it was easy, but had lots of complications. In the 50s, Eugene Bricker uh, modified and improved the ileal conduit where it also separates the urine from the stool by taking the ureters into a segment of small bowel, bringing them out to the skin. And this remains a very valid and very solid type of uh, urinary diversion. It's quick, it has low complications, and it's very popular in GYN oncology and I think is very popular, popular in the United Kingdom. Late 80s to 1990s, there was a big surge in enthusiasm about creating continent urinary diversion where the patient would not have to wear a bag. It's a more complex reconstruction, usually using the right colon, a piece of small bowel, sometimes the appendix as a stoma, placing the ureters into a reservoir that contains anywhere from 300 to 600 cc's of urine. The patient would self-catheterize uh, several times a day to empty the urine. Um, these uh, reconstructions in GYN oncology really fall into two broad categories. One of them using the terminal ileum as the uh, segment for continence where you would catheterize through uh, by narrowing the lumen and by using the ileocecal valve as a mechanism for continence. The other option would use an appendix to create the appendix as the track where the catheter would go. Um, they take more to build, they're usually more complex, they may carry higher risk of uh, complications, stenosis leak and reoperations, but they do provide 24-hour continence where the patient would not need a bag. Usually the patients are younger, more motivated, are able to self-catheterize, have healthy upper urinary tract uh, system where there's less concern about chronic renal disease. It's definitely an option, but usually in an elderly or more sick patients where you're trying to do a quicker diversion, you would go to the route of the ileal conduit. And uh, Lastly, we kind of went full circle going back to the wet colostomy uh, beginning in uh, 1989. There was a description by a urologist named Carter of a double-barreled wet colostomy where basically creates a loop colostomy from the left colon, um, insert the ureters into the quiet or distal limb. So you're really not totally mixing stool and urine. Uh, the advantages of that, you have one stoma, there's no division of any bowel or colon, so there's less uh, bowel division, less bowel anastomosis, and it's a quick uh, way to, to divert the urine and the stool. So it's, it's taken some interest in the GYN oncology field. We've done some cases, uh, University, uh, Ohio State University has done cases and published on that. So it's an interesting approach for people to consider in selected patients. The final and fifth way to divert is by creating an orthotopic bladder, which is not usually suitable for most of our patients because of a heavily radiated vagina and urethra. So it's hard to find a patient who would be suitable for creation of a Madrid type pouch or a Budapest type pouch where you bring the colon or intestine uh, to the remaining urethra. So in summary, I think the ileal conduit remains a very solid way quick way, low complication rate. I think continent diversion with an Indiana, Miami type pouch or a, an appendix based pouch is also a reasonable strategy. This double barreled wet colostomy I think is also interesting to consider in some cases.